Hi, I'm Jennifer from Shabby Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make this adorable and practical picnic tote and as part of the download we'll give you the instructions on how to make the bonus quilt that attaches to the back of the bag. Now what I love about that is sometimes when I go on a picnic the quilt itself that we'll be sitting on takes up a lot of the space in the bag and I don't have so much for food and drink. Here we've put straps on the back so the quilt simply rolls up and it'll go on the back of the bag. That way you have plenty of space inside your bag for all the other things you want to bring along on your special excursion that day. Now these fabrics are from the collection called All the Twitter by Hoffman Fabrics and we just had a wonderful time working with them and they're really unique because the only fabric that comes as running yardage is actually the birds. The rest of the fabrics come in fat quarters. It's printed that way on a two yard repeat you get eight different fat quarters. So for the sample bag we used the set that had all the cute polka dots on it and what I'll be using today is their more textured solids which are shown here. I mean in fact let me just show you while I'm here. These are the textured solids we'll be using today along with the inspirational fabric for the bird. The one that you see behind me was made with the polka dots and you have these other groups as well. So again, this is the All A Twitter collection from Hoffman and it's really unique and we had a lot of fun with that. So of course you're going to need some measurements. Go to the home page. It's a download there. The very uh, bottom of the home page there's free downloads. You can click that or the description box below this video will also have those links for you. So I won't be going over measurements because you can download that and get all of that information for you. I'll be using Superior Threads today, the 50 weight Egyptian cotton. It just blended beautifully with these fabrics. And of course, if you don't have the color cards, these are live threads on the card. This is Superior Threads, 50 weight Egyptian cotton. I encourage you to get these threads. That way, when you're working on projects from fabrics you already have, you can coordinate the thread perfectly and make sure you're ordering the right color every single time. We'll also be using some of the Cute cuts or cutie cuts, however you pronounce it, from Riley Blake. Lori Holt's rulers will be fussy cutting. So we have that bird coming out in just the right spot, like on the back of the bag, for example. We went ahead and we fussy cut that so we'd be seeing the face of the bird rather than maybe a part of the bird we don't really want to see, or maybe even just cutting that all together wrong. So more of that as we go. Let's just jump into the project and we'll be, I'll explain more of the tools as we go. The bag looks complicated. I am not an experienced bag person. I have made probably a dozen bags in my whole life. Most of those on video with you. I'm primarily a quilter. You can do this. Let's jump into it. So for the front of the bag, of course, I have my inspiration fabric. I just couldn't resist having that on the front, the sweet little birds. And this is digital printing, by the way. This is not screen printed. So that's why it's so much vibrant color. We went ahead and cut out a nice rectangle and we used a fusible fleece that we simply put on the back of that and ironed it together. We used our larger ruler. In fact, let me just show this to you so you see what this is going to look like. Fusible fleece is on the back. We used a four inch grid and we simply drew our lines with our friction pen, stitched with our coordinating thread. We have all those, so we'll make sure we have all those numbers for you so you know what thread you need to, to choose to do the project. Of course, these are available as kits and simply straight stitch. Then you can iron it. The lines will go away with heat and we square that up. So we have a nice clean uh, piece to begin working with. That's for the front of your bag and we can put that aside for now. Of course, we'll be using that a little bit later on in our video. Now let's move on to the back of our bag, which is patchwork. So I might even turn that around just so you can get a good look at the back of that bag. So it's simple patchwork. And those are three and a half inch squares. So when we get our fabric, we simply cut our strips. So these are three and a half inch squares. And as I mentioned in your kit, and this is a fat quarter friendly project. Let's say you don't buy this collection, or maybe by the time you're seeing this video, this collection is already sold through. Don't worry. This is a fat quarter friendly project. All you need is eight fat quarters, and then you need, I believe it's five eighths of a yard of an inspiration fabric for the front and maybe for the windows on your patchwork on the back. So this will work with any collection. But with the particular All A Twitter collection of the textured solids, 
you have eight fat quarters in your two yard piece. You'll just cut three and a half inch strips and three and a half inch squares and we just randomly place them. Uh, the top row has, of course, just the textured. Then when we got to this row, we knew if we just randomly cut strips of the inspiration fabric, we could potentially, as I mentioned before, you know, maybe end up with this part of the bird. So this is where I love to use Lori Holt's Cute Cuts rulers, where you can fussy cut exactly what you want. And I, this is where I love my spinning mat. Let me, in fact, let me get that spinning mat out. I didn't, this spinning mat was out for a long time before I figured out just how clever and enjoyable and safe it is to use the, uh, the spinning mat, especially for projects like this. So let's go ahead. We'll get our inspiration fabric out. And we have our fussy cut ruler. Now, look, look here. We have seven birds that we need to fussy cut. Of course, in your kit, you have a certain amount of fabric. Again, let's say you're, let's say you're using a different fabric altogether. Whatever it is that you want to feature in that window, this is where I'm going to go ahead and use the three and a half inch ruler. And I'm going to decide, let's say that I want that bird right there. Well, if I have that bird there, will I be able to get that bird here? And the answer is yes. So what I recommend you do is you simply draw around that way before you start cutting anything, you can make sure that that is truly where you want that to be. And let's say you change your mind, simply heat up your iron and those lines will disappear and you can start again. That's what I think I love so much about the friction pen is I do want to get rid of those lines. Sometimes I do change my mind. And then let's say I want to have this bird here and I'll just draw that. And then at that point, We'll grab our rotary cutter and you can even just leave that in position if you'd like. Here, let's move some stuff out of the way. I don't have to pick anything up. That shifted just a little bit. Let me just put that back in position and I can just rotate my mat. That way I'm not lifting this uh, ruler up and put, putting it back into position, I can just let go gently, rotate, and cut. And there's my bird. And of course, I'll discontinue. So you can see how the fussy cut ruler, I can see through my design easily. It has plenty of lines so I can uh, line up. And the spinning mat are just a great combination of being able to precisely cut out exactly where you want to feature on this particular fabric or whatever fabric you might be using if you're using your own. So we have our three and a half inch squares of our textured and then our three and a half inch squares of our, our featured fabric or whatever that inspiration is for you. And as you would expect, you're just simply going to lay them out in a grid and you'll sew those together side by side, pressing the top row to the left, second row to the right, third row to the left, bottom to the right, and sew those together, just as you would expect. Then, and this is the back of our project, then at the very top, once that's done, you'll simply right sides together, flip that up, you have your piece, and again, we did the fusible fleece on the back. So now you have your front and your back patchwork ready to go. The next step is we're going to go ahead and we're going to put, make our straps and we're going to make our pocket for the front of, of the uh, bag. The, again, the measurements, don't worry about that. We'll just go right sides together. I'm just going to trim that up here. Right sides together and you'll sew a quarter of an inch. I do want to mention for a lot of this, it's a quarter of an inch, and as we start sewing the bag together, we're gonna switch to a half inch seam allowance, just so there's a little bit more holding that bag together. So I will cue you when we switch from a quarter to a half inch seam allowance, but for now, you're at a quarter inch seam allowance. You'll simply sew down these two sides and turn this right side out. In fact, I'm gonna go do that right now. OK, 
Okay, well, I do have some of my thin scissors here. Here we go. Now we'll simply turn that right side out. Let's move those rulers. So those, these fussy cut rulers, I love it. And the other thing before I put these away is there's five sizes in here, all the way up to six and a half. And isn't that nice? Sometimes when you buy rulers, you get one. I just love that there's that variety of sizes because I'm always working on different size projects. Now that you have this here like this, simply turn this through. We've done that ahead of time as well. And you can use your point turner and get that all nice and smooth and pressed out. At this point, in fact, let's go ahead and just press that because I want to show you, I want to show you the very next step. Let's go ahead and press that through. So on the bag itself, do you see how the bottom kind of dives into this very, uh, the bottom of the pocket kind of dives into the bottom of the bag. Therefore, the opening here is going to be at the bottom. So this top portion, we're simply going to flip down now I'm going to take my Perfect Press Hot Ruler from Clover. This is the coolest tool. You know, how many times do I need to fold something down a specific distance? And I'm kind of guessing. Here, this is completely heat resistant. I want to fold my pocket down an inch and a quarter. So let's, let's get a good look at an inch and a quarter. About like that. Then I just kind of push it. Then I can come in with my iron and just sit there. And it doesn't, doesn't. I've been, I've sat here some <laughs> talking and been here about 20 seconds and it does not even phase this ruler. So this is made to be heated up. And now I know that I'm exactly at the measurement that I want to be. And I simply slide that out. Now we'll take that to, actually we don't need to take that to the sewing machine. I already have one ahead of time. You'll use your beautiful coordinating thread, just stitch across the top, and you'll also base the bottom. Now your pocket's ready to go. So let's move on to that next step. The next step is, of course, now I've got my pocket, I need to make the straps. Of course, there's straps on the front and the bag of that pattern. You'll use your, whatever fabric you want to use for your straps, you'll need four of them. You'll, you'll sew two together, end to end just to have a longer uh, strap and you'll simply right sides together take it to the sewing machine sew your quarter inch and press that seam open and we've done that ahead of time so I have two sewn together with the seam and it's pressed open now I will simply fold that in half and press this will provide, well, you'll see. We're just gonna fold that in half, press all the way down. Then we're gonna use that hot ruler again. I love those types of inventions. You know, there's, you just kind of bump along with tools that you don't know exist. And then when you find a tool, you go, oh, why didn't I find that tool sooner? I definitely felt like that with that that uh, ruler that can be uh, heated because of course normally with rulers we're not getting our irons near there we don't dare or they'll melt so this was an awesome tool to find so we'll simply open that up we'll use that hot ruler again let's just get these things out of the way and watch how cool this is we'll simply set this at the one and a quarter inch and that's going to be exactly halfway from here to here as here to here. So about one and a quarter, and we're gonna fold this over and just iron all the way down. And you will do the same on the other side. Now I've done that ahead of time. So let me get that out just to save us some time. And that's what that looks like. And of course, as you can see, just to show you again, the ruler just slipped in there and we just simply press all the way down and pull that out. Now, 
we will go right sides together. Don't worry about the raw edges on the either end because those are going to be tucked in. You, so you don't actually want to tuck these ends in. Just leave them raw, right sides together. And I will need to make a thread change. And when I come back, I will have this strap sewn. In fact, I have one done. I'll show you what this looks like. So I'll do them both like this. You'll have uh, just stitching about an eighth of an inch, maybe a little bit more than that on either side. And when I come back and I have those straps done, I'll take you to the next step. I have my two straps ready and now I'm going to grab my pocket. So with this pocket, of course, I want to center that on my piece. And that's about six and a quarter inches. You know, it's very easy to find the midpoint. You could simply fold the project in half and finger press, fold this in half and finger press as well. And that's going to get you to your center. And I'm just going to double check that. It should be about six and a quarter inches from the side. Let's double check that. Looks good. I like everything to be nice and precise. I'll nudge that just a little bit, six and a quarter. Perfect. Double check our measurements. Okay, we're ready to go. Now, as you can see, the strap comes up and is right alongside the pocket. And where the pocket ends, the strap is free then. So we're not going to stitch this entire strap to the bag, only from here to the very top of that pocket. Now, because we want the back of this to line up, in fact, let me show it to you. See how that strap runs right through that seam in the back? If you measure in six inches with your ruler, in fact, let me move this out of the way. If you measure in six inches with your ruler and just let it sit there, right there, that's where the edge of your strap will sit. That's where we want it to sit. Because that's where it's going to sit on the opposite side of the back. I'm going to pin it right down here so nothing moves. And then make sure when you bring, I've done this before where I had a little twist in there. Well, that's not good. Make sure you don't have any twist. And again, let's bring out our six inch ruler and let that sit right there. And we'll bring our strap right alongside that. So it parallels all the way up and we'll pin. And we'll simply sew. And we're going to secure on both sides. And I also recommend coming right across the top here. Really reinforce this. This is where your bag is going to have most of its stress is in the handles, especially if you have liquids in there, which can get heavy. So this is where you really want to reinforce that bag well on the strap. You might even want to shorten your stitch length, but for sure, um, I would also probably go across the bottom and just really reinforce this area and then coming across here. So we'll do that part off camera. Um, if this was me sewing it and I'm going to be here, come up, come across, come down, come across. You might even want to do this box this area a couple times. That's where using the coordinating thread is wonderful. And you really probably can't even see the thread from the overhead camera. It just blends so beautifully. So when I come back, this side will be done and we're going to go to the straps on the back side of the bag. So my pocket and my straps are now on my bag and I'm going to set that aside for now. And let's put the straps on the back as well. Remember how we had our ruler set at six inches? We'll do the same thing here and just happens to be riding right along that seam right there. So that's great news. We'll get the other strap. Same story. And this came up to the top of that pocket, which ended up being about nine inches. And we're going to do the same thing here. Come here, simply pin, and you'll stop right there at that, that crease, that seam. And you'll do the same thing, coming up, making your box, reinforcing, making sure you don't have a twist. 
Let's just double check the measurement. But really, you, of course, it's logical. We want to have something riding right along that seam. But it's always good to double check our measurements. Six inches, yes. We're going to ride right along that seam. Pin, and once again, I'll go off camera. I will secure that to our, the back of our bag. And when we come back, we'll put our elastic uh, straps on the back and we'll finish up this bag. So the straps are on the back of the bag now as well. But the other thing we need to add to the back of the bag is going to be the elastic straps and that's gonna be holding on our quilt. So now let's say that you don't plan to put a quilt on the back. You can simply skip this step. This is only if you want to have the option of adding the quilt to the back. So completely up to you if you wanna do this step. And the neat thing is, is how you prepare the, in fact, let me just show them to you. This is what they look like. Let me show you how we got to that. I always kind of like to see the end and then figure out how to get to that point. Um, same thing as you did for the, stri uh, the straps. You're cutting this uh, strips across your fabric, fold in half. Once again, you will use your hot ruler, I guess I would call it. The only difference, and again, lining up with the one and a quarter, folding in, the only difference is this time, you do need to fold these ends in, and I recommend you top stitch them. So we did that ahead of time. Let me show you what that looks like. So just like the strap before, fold it in, except now you're gonna fold the ends in, fold in half, sew to secure, except don't sew across the end. We need to feed the elastic through. Now, of course, Clover, who is very clever in our industry has this tool. And this is called, I think this is called the elastic lock set. Let me show you how this works. Pretty cool. You know, I've always used the old safety pin and fed that through. And sometimes I feed that through and then I lose the end. It just kind of keeps going through the project and I'm like, oh Lord. So this is so cool. You actually just clamp this onto the bottom of your elastic and then there's this plastic needle. Now the instructions say that you can feed the elastic through and tie a knot. We didn't have a lot of great luck with that. So what we did instead was just fed the elastic through, uh, laid the elastic down on it, back on itself and with a thread in a nice bold color, hand stitched three little stitches in there um, so that when we get ready to pull this through, we would be able to seam rip those easily and pull those out. At first we did white thread and then we went to pull them out. I couldn't even see the thread. So use a coordinating thread and then you'll simply feed this through. Pretty cool little gadget and really affordable. It's just a couple dollars. So if you do a lot of elastic, this may be a perfect tool for you. We'll just simply feed this through. Great. And then when you get this like this, simply undo that, feed that in till about right, about right there, inside there, pull that through. Now I'm just gonna pin that. And you would take that to the sewing machine. In fact, I can show you here so we can save some time. I'm just gonna really get in there and reinforce. I have a little box kind of I stitched around here. Then at the top, you simply pull this through, get your seam ripper, seam rip out those couple stitches, unthread that, and again, release it till it's just inside there and stitch it at the top again. So now you have your elastic strap. Pretty cool tool to have, especially if you do a lot of elastic. Now, I just want to show you where uh, we actually position this on here. So you can see, I might even show you on this bag, it might be simpler for you to see. You have your seam here. We positioned this about just like that, and we stitched that down again. This is another area that's gonna have a lot of stress on it. If you are putting a quilt, taking it in and putting it back, so you do want to reinforce that. You can also move the fabric kind of out of the way. So when you take this to the sewing machine, you're not dealing with quite so much bulk. 
And once again, it'd be great to use coordinating thread. You are going to see the thread. You can make a thread change back to the orange at this point. Use your thread chart to find the perfect thread. And now I will just box this from here to there and there and maybe do it at least twice. So now that's like this and the same here. Just like that. Actually, well, yep, just like that. And then when you get ready to sew that, you're just going to kind of pull it out of the way and you'll go ahead and stitch that. So we're going to go ahead and do that off camera just to save us some time. When we come back, we're going to put the two halves of our bag together and get this thing finished up and get going on a picnic. So I've sewn my straps on and like I said, I just pulled this aside and I sewed a rectangle and I went around twice to reinforce that. Now we need to put the bottom of our bag on. So we'll get our fabric and we'll simply place that uh, right sides together. Now we'll switch to the half inch seam allowance. A half inch here and then you're going to turn. All right, so the bag will look like that. And then we need to have, of course, the other side of the bag. And then again, you will be right sides together. So you're basically sewing the bottom of the bag on so that your straps are going to be at the top and those will be attached to the bottom of both of those. When I come back, that step will be done. And then we're going to sew the sides together and we'll box the corners. So the two halves of the bag and the bottom are put together. Now let's just bring the sides up. We'll pin, take it to the sewing machine and sew all the way down a half inch seam allowance all the way to the very bottom here. Let's go do that together right now. And I don't I don't think that I actually have a full half inch seam allowance, but it doesn't really matter. What matters is when I do the lining, I'm consistent so that it fits nicely in the bag. I'm definitely more than a quarter, but I think I am actually less than a half. I'm just trying to take a bigger bite of the fabric because I have a lot of layers going together. I'm going to repeat the same thing for the other side of the bag. Then we'll box our corners, put a pocket in our lining, do the same thing with the lining, and we'll finish up this bag. Now, let's... Even if you give the bag something I learned, just a little bit of trim in that corner. What happens when you get ready to box corners is when you lay this out, when you clip that, this seam will want to lay open a little bit more. And sometimes, even if you give it a little bit of a press here, it helps you line up doing a box corner. So let's see. I don't think the iron's super hot, but let's see what we can do here. I like that laying open so I have a kind of almost a center line, something to aim for. Measure up two and a half inches. Let's see, two and a half. And when I do that, I like to line up my ruler. So I'm trying to make sure this is kind of centered here. I want to measure that. So one, two and a half. And I'm, that white line is kind of going right down there. If you want a bigger box corner, just go more. But again, whatever you do on one side, make sure you do it on the other so the bag is even. And we'll draw a line here. I like to pin it so nothing moves. And we're going to take that to the sewing machine and we'll go ahead and sew on the line. We'll do the same thing on the other side of the bag. And we will, once we sew that, we're simply going to trim that away. And then we'll be able to move on to the next part of our bag. So now we need to do the inside lining and we have a pocket on the inside. Of course, we love our pockets. So let's get our two fabrics out for that. And you'll make the pocket just exactly the same way that you did before with the pocket on the outside except that we have two compartments so with your fabric you'll just fold that right sides together 
you'll sew up either side. Once you have that put together, you'll find your center point. You could either just fold it in half or you can measure. And same thing with the fabric that it will be sewn to. In fact, let me just bring out what that's gonna look like when it's completely sewn. And again, the raw edges are down and the, the fold is here. And you would have your drawn line. I don't know if you can see that. So we can line that up. And that way when we stitch it down, we have two separate compartments here. So let me bring that out so you see what, what we've done. That's gonna be easier to see. So it's like this. And we did a basting stitch across the bottom. So now we have two little flaps. Of course, so this is our pocket, but we need to have the bottom and the other side of the bag as well. And that's two pieces of fabric that we've simply sewn together and pressed our seam open. Doesn't matter which one you choose, whichever color you like. We'll sew this to the bottom. Quarter inch seam, we're gonna sew this to the top. So I wanna show you what that looks like, okay? And again, this is the base. So if, you, if I want the red on the bottom, and maybe this on the other side, then I'll go ahead and sew this here and this here. When I come back, those are gonna be sewn together. We're gonna sew this. Once that's done, let me just take you through the whole step. I'm not only gonna sew this together, sew the bottom together, then it's just like before. We're gonna sew down the sides with our half inch seam allowance and box the corners. So we have a shape just like this one that we'll then insert into the bag to complete it. So now we have our lining and we have our bag. Let's go ahead and turn the lining right side out. And typically when you're gonna put a lining inside a bag, you will wanna put right sides together. So since this is the right side and this is the right side, um, you'll want to make, just make sure, again, right sides to right sides. Now, this is where your straps are. You're gonna have the weight of the quilt back here. You can decide whether you want the pockets toward the back where the straps are, or if you want the pockets toward the front of the bag. That's completely up to you. I'm gonna go ahead and put the pockets toward the straps, and I'm just gonna fish this into the corners, just trying to, oh, we gotta trim that corner, don't we? Didn't do that. Trim that fabric away. So now I'm gonna feed this in there and I'm just trying to make the lining fit the bag as, as evenly as I can, lining up my side seams, just like this, and pinning all the way around. And I will go ahead and sew a quarter inch seam or maybe even a little bit more, because I've been sewing a little bit <laughs> a little bit wide, but not completely a half inch with this pressure foot I have here. And I'm gonna go all the way around, but I'm gonna leave about an eight inch opening somewhere in here so that I can turn the bag through. So when I come back, I will have the bag turned through. Then I wanna show you, because the bottom of the bag doesn't have the fusible fleece and I wanted it to have a little more oomph to it, a little more strength, we're using a piece of decor bond that's about the right size footprint as the bottom of the bag. And we're gonna slip that in and give our bag a little bit more stability on the bottom of the bag. So you'll see that when I come back. So the lining is now, we've turned the bag through, pushed the lining inside. We have our opening, and this is where we use the decor bond. Whatever the size of the bottom of the bag is, you wanna cut that. And those measurements will be on the download. I'm just gonna slip that into the opening lay that along the bottom of the bag. And again, it just gives the bag a little bit more stability and strength in the bottom. Push the lining back through. And here you're almost done. I can feel the seam and I'm literally gonna roll this with my fingers. I would simply pin all the way around. I also did a half inch seam at the top when I put the lining and the bag together, a half inch seam. So you're just gonna roll this all the way around. When you get to your opening, turning that down a half an inch, another half an inch, you'll pin that together. 
You can even iron that if you want to. But for now, I'll just pin it together. So you've pinned all the way around, everything's smooth. And you'll simply take that to the sewing machine and you run a quarter inch top stitch all the way around the perimeter of the bag. So I hope you enjoyed learning how to make the picnic tote from Shabby Fabrics.